So to draw a histogram, the first thing we have to look for when we're given a set of information is if our data is continuous. So we look for our greater than and less than signs. So we look at all our information and this is all grouped together. So the frequency is how many fall within that group. So if we look at our information here, we've given the duration of phone calls and the frequency of those durations between one and three minutes, three and nine, etc. So to draw the histogram, I look and the first thing I need to do is I need to find the class widths. So I look, these are called my classes through all of them. So if I look at my width for each of those, I say the top one, so this one is three, minus my bottom one of one. So three minus one means two minutes. Then nine minus three is six minutes. 15 minus nine is six minutes. And then 20 minus 15 is five minutes. Then I need to calculate the frequency density. So the frequency density is going to take my frequency of whatever I've got and I'm going to divide my frequency by my class width. So I take the frequency divided by the width. So here I'm going to say the frequency here is 10 divided by the width which is 2 so my frequency density is going to be 5. Then I've got 42 divided by the width of 6, which equals 7. The frequency there of 12 divided by 6, which equals 2. And then the last one, the frequency is 7 divided by 5, which equals 1.4. So now I've got all of my classes and I've got my frequency densities. So now I can plot the histogram. So on the histogram, on my graph paper, I'm going to take all my different points. I'm going to label them out on the X axis. I put the thing that I'm measuring. So here I'm dealing with the duration in minutes, always don't forget the units. And then on the y-axis, we have the frequency density. So I plot all my points so that I have a nice even scale. And then I'm going to plot what I have. So I go with my durations starting at one. So on my x-axis with my ruler, I find where one is. Okay, and I'm going to draw a line straight up to the frequency density of five. So from one, I draw my line all the way up till we get to five and then I find three and then I go across from the five and then down at three. Then from three, because my next one starts at three, I go up to my next density, which is going to be seven. So I draw my line all the way up to seven and then my density is up to nine. So I go across to nine and I draw my line up and across from seven. I go like that. So each line needs to touch the next one. So then from nine, I start my next one goes from nine to 15. So at nine, I draw up to the 
frequency density, which is 2, so at 2, and then you're going to go across until I get to 15. So at 15, I draw my line up to 2 so that it's connected, and then my last one goes from 15 to 20, so at 20, I go up to 1.4. And across. So there I have a histogram going up to the frequency densities and each line touches the next one. If I look at the next example, now when I look at my values, I no longer have greater than or less than sign. So it's not continuous anymore. So the first thing I have to do is I have to make it continuous. So I do that by subtracting 0.5 from my first value and adding 0.5 to my second value. So in this example, dealing with amounts of water, I can't get any less than zero. So zero stays the same. So when I look at my new values, I'm gonna go zero still. And now I change them to greater than and less than signs. And on the other end, I'm going to add 0.5. So I've got 19.5. Then for my next one, where I've got 20, on that side I'm going to subtract 0.5. So now I say 19.5 with my less than and greater than signs. And on the other end, I add 0.5. So I say 39.5. With the 40, so I subtract 0.5, so I have 39.5 with my greater than and less than signs, and then 89 becomes 89.5. And then my last one, so from 90, I subtract 0.5, so I have 89.5. And to my last value, I add 0.5. So now, all of those are continuous because now we can see that when my last one ends, my next one starts. So when I draw my graph with those values, each of my bars are going to touch, which is what we want in a histogram. So now that I've got my new classes, then I can calculate a new class width by taking my one end, subtracting the other, so 19.5 minus 0 is 19.5. 39.5 minus 19.5 is 20. 89.5 minus 39.5 gives me 50. And then 189.5 minus 89.5 gives me 100. So now I've got the class widths. Now I can calculate frequency density. So the frequency density, I'm going to take the frequency divided by the class width. So the frequency is 10 divided by the class width of 19.5. So that's going to give me 0 0.51. Then my next frequency is 8 divided by 20. It's going to give me 0 0.4. Then I say 12 divided by 50. It's going to be 0 0.24. And my last one frequency is 20 divided by 100. It's going to be 0. Point. So those are all my frequency densities. So then in this question, there's a little extra part there that says state the modal class. So remember the mode is the most common value. So now the modal class will be where I have the most frequency. So it's going to be the one that is the highest. They're out there in terms of frequency. So my modal class would then be that one because that is the highest frequency. Okay, so if I look at the next example, 
again I don't have continuous information because I don't have greater than or equal to signs so I need to change them before I can do anything so here I'm no longer starting at 0 I'm starting at 31 so from that end I subtract 0.5 so I say I've got 30.5 and then I add in my greater than and equal to signs then on the other end I add 0.5 so I say 50 0.5. Then my next one, 51 minus 0.5 becomes 50.5. Adding in your greater than or equal to sign, 60 plus 0.5 becomes 60.5. 61 minus 0.5 becomes 60.5. Adding in your greater than and equal to signs, 70 plus 0.5 becomes 70.5. Then 71 minus 0.5 becomes 70.5. 100 plus 0.5 becomes 100.5. 101 minus 0.5 becomes 100.5. And then up to 150 point so now I have continuous so now I can find the class width like I did before so I take my one minus my other so 50.5 minus 30.5 gives me 20 60.5 minus 50.5 gives me 10 70.5 minus 60.5 gives me 10 100.5 minus 70.5 gives me 30, and then 150.5 minus 100.5 gives me 50. And then I can calculate the frequency density by taking my class width divided by, I mean my frequency, by taking my frequency divided by my class width. So I'm going to say 16 divided by 20 equals 0 0.8. 25 divided by 10 gives me 2.5. 36 divided by 10 gives me 3.6. 33 divided by 30 is 1.1 and 10 divided by 50 is 0 0.2. So now I have the frequency densities and I have my data that's continuous. So then I can plot that onto a graph. So on my graph, I have my x-axis with what I'm measuring. So this is weights in grams with my units. And on my y-axis is my frequency density. And I have a suitable scale. Now because I'm not starting at zero over here, I don't have to start at zero here. So I can skip the first ones, especially because I'm going up so high. I can start just where I've got 30 on my x-axis. So I start by saying my 30.5, that one's frequency density was 0 0.8. So at 30.5, I draw my line up to 0 0.8, and that goes to 50.5. So I draw across and down. Then from 50.5, I'm going to go up to my frequency density of 2.5. I go across all the way to 60.5 and draw my lines down so that they're all touching. So then I go to 60.5. I go up for my frequency density of 3.6. Across and down to 70.5. Then from 
my frequency density goes up to 1.1 and that goes all the way across to 100.5 that goes down and then at 100.5 to 150.5 I go up to 0 0.2 and then down so there is then my histogram all touching up to the correct frequency densities.